Recently, I had to fix a minor leak on our propane system. I also had to do some troubleshooting on our stove. So today we're gonna to talk about that as well as some propane tips. Over the past year, our propane stove has become more and more difficult to light. It's just been really strange. Some burners will light, some won't. So we're gonna jump into that. We also had an issue where our oven would light and it would just go out periodically for no reason. First off, while I am a registered RV tech and I've been to a class and been officially trained, I'm not a professional. I don't work on these all day. So this is kind of one of those how-tos. It's not a how-to, this is to how we did it. If you're not comfortable with working on your propane system, by all means, get a professional to help you with it. Before I jump into troubleshooting the stove, I first had to fix an obvious leak that I found in our propane system. Last time we had our propane filled and I was putting the bottle back in, I noticed that the little sleeve right behind the connector was obviously leaking. I could hear it, I could move the hose, I could hear it doing all kinds of hissing and weird stuff. I of course also sprayed some of the little soap leak detector type stuff on there and it was bad. Fixing this problem was super simple. First of all, because I knew exactly where the leak was and second of all, because these parts are pretty common and available on Amazon. I got the connector with a 15 inch hose. This hose is rated at 350 PSI, so it's perfectly fine to come off the tank and go to the regulator. Really easy, just some thread tape, made for propane of course. Gas line, high density thread tape. Screw it on, tighten it up, leak check it, good to go. The second part of this is anytime you do any kind of work, replace something that modifies or changes your propane system at all, you need to leak check it. Now, I'm guilty of not doing this after I changed up my regulators. I just did a spray leak test, which is okay. You know, you can use some Mr. Bubbles or uh, I'll put a link down below of the leak detector I use. It's just soapy water, really. It's just colored soapy water. Good to go but you really wanna do what's called a time pressure drop test. Now, I learned how to do this at my fundamentals course in the NRVTA. The NRVTA is an awesome, awesome place to either get fully certified and become an RV technician, or even just take the fundamentals course like I did and become a registered technician, and you get to learn a lot about RV systems. And one of the things I learned was how to use one of these. This is a manometer. Basically, this is what you will use to do a pressure check. Now, the whole concept behind this is really pretty simple and anybody can do it. You could pick one of these up for 50 bucks. Conducting a time pressure drop test is really pretty simple. Sounds more complicated than it is. All you're really doing there is you are connecting a meter to one of the outputs on one of the burners on your stove. But the idea is really simple. You connect it up, you open up your tanks, you open up the burner, so you pressurize it and you get a reading on the gauge. By the way, if you get one of these meters, this is not designed to come out, it's designed to stay in here. Don't go try ripping it out. Per instructions, a little bit of spit. And I'm gonna get this thing like way on there. There we go. Nice and snug. Put a little bit of saliva seal there. That on. The gauge should read about 11 inches of water column just sitting there pressurized. That came right up to just over 11, 11 half inches of water column, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. That tells me my regulators and everything are good to that point. Now I leave this on and I am going to go shut off propane at the tanks. To do an actual pressure test, what you do is you leave that gas in there, you leave it pressurized. You shut off your tanks. That way there's no source to fill the lines if you have a leak. You dial the pressure down from 11 inches of water column to eight inches of water column by opening one of your other burners and letting the gauge come down. The propane tanks are off. The system is charged, but I don't want to leave it up here at 11 and a half or so. I want to bleed off that pressure down to eight. Around nine, nine and a half, I guess, is where the Regulator diaphragms start to relax 
because we don't want the high pressure side of the lines recharging the low pressure side of the line. So we kind of kind of let it down. So let's see how this goes. You can see the high pressure side of the line, charge it right back up. So let me uh, actually turn on this burner so we're not just releasing propane. Don't want to set my manometer on fire either. So all we're doing here is bleeding pressure from the high pressure to the low pressure. Okay, now, okay, there's down a little bit. And this takes a little bit of practice. You have to turn it down. The gauge will go back up, you turn it down. And you gotta play with it until you can get it to sit at eight inches of water column. Then it's a matter of just setting a timer. Uh, the class, I believe, said three to five minutes. So I did five minutes. And you wanna see that thing stay right at eight inches of water column and not drop. There we go. It's staying pretty steady, just under eight. If it drops and starts going down and it keeps going down, you have a leak somewhere. Now, how to find that leak? Every RV system is different. Every propane system is different. Uh, you're just gonna have to start looking. Don't have a lot of advice on that because I didn't have to do it. Our pressure test was good. Five minutes later and it is dead on. Now that I have my leak repair out of the way and my pressure test out of the way, I know that whatever's causing my problem here with lighting should be somewhere right in here. So I just got to troubleshooting. There really wasn't anything in that particular class at the NRVTA that taught about troubleshooting stoves, but I have a pretty extensive background of troubleshooting in the military. And a lot of times things like this are just process of elimination. So that's what I did. The problem is basically that burner one would light right up. And I'm calling these one, two, and three from left to right. One, two, three. Burner one would light right up. Burner two, burner three, and the oven would not light very well. I would, it would just take click, 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 click. You can see the spark there. Just start, 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 just hoping to get it to light. Now we could smell gas when we did this and we could see a spark. So it was a little bit confusing to me as to why gas plus spark did not equal fire. Once I got this thing apart, I noticed that the gas line came in, went across and it fed all three burners in order and then the stove. So my thinking was, okay, well, burner one works great and everything downstream from that does not. So I started looking into the pipes and lines between burner one and the rest of the system and I couldn't really find anything. So my next step was to swap burner one and burner two. These things pop off really easy. It's just two screws and then you've got a tube going through. When I swapped burner one and burner two, the problem moved. So I know that the problem is something to do with the burner assembly, somewhere between the tube and the burner, the igniter, something in there. So my next step was to eliminate the tube and just swap the burners. The burner and a burner assembly also has the little starter tied to it. And the problem moved with the burner. So now I know it's not the hose or pipe or whatever. There's no blockages in there, which kind of confused me because the burner part of this thing is just super, super simple. The whole thing's really super simple. It's just hoses and gas going through it. My next step, the only other part that I could move and troubleshoot with was the actual igniter. Uh, and that just attaches right to the bottom of the burner, has a little arm that comes out and the voltage gets applied to that and then arcs to the burner, creating a spark, creating flame and fire. So I swapped the igniters around, leaving the burners in place, and now none of them would light. <laughs> so I was a little confused by this. So I did reach out to Todd and I asked him a little bit about this and he said check to make sure that the gap is big enough. I just assumed if it was creating a spark, it would be fine. Turns out, no. So what I did was I just manually manipulated with a pair of needle nose pliers, I manipulated the plate that holds the igniter and just kind of bend it this way a little bit to move and create a little more of a gap. Boom, it worked great. I was able to light one spark and good to go. So it turns out I didn't need to take all that apart. Lesson here is check your spark gap before you check anything. However, I had one more catch. I put the stove back together and I was clicking the lighter and the way I had adjusted the igniter turned out not to be the right way because what was happening now is You've got an insulator and then you've got the wire coming out and bending that back allowed the insulator to drop below the frame, the bottom of the stove. And it was arcing now to that instead of the burner. When I tested this, it didn't do that because I didn't have the stove put together. Not a problem. I bent that back. And then instead of trying to bend the whole thing back, I bent it this way. 
So I just tweaked it out that way a little bit, created more of a gap. Now you're supposed to have about a 3 16 inch gap. And that's pretty close to what I ended up with. It's probably close to a quarter inch for us, but that solved our problem. My next step was to see if I could do the same thing on the oven. It's a little bit different down there. And while I was going through this troubleshooting, Tara had the absolute genius idea of, did you read the manual? Duh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> so I looked in there, I looked at the troubleshooting steps. They weren't a lot of help. However, I read something about the oven that I just didn't know. The oven is a little bit different. It has a pilot light. So you're lighting the pilot light to then light the burner. So the difference there is when you push the thing in and you hit the starter and you see the pilot light, you don't just let it go like you do here. You're supposed to hold that in for five seconds, make sure the pilot light stays lit, then you can let it go and it stays running and then you can turn your gas up. So that was one mistake we made. It still wasn't our problem. The spark was still our problem down there too. And that was a real easy fix. Again, just bend the little thing out, create a little more of a gap, makes a nice big spark now, and the oven lights. So that is it on troubleshooting the stove and the oven lighting issue. So I wanted to try troubleshooting the oven going out issue. And I don't know if something I did here fixed something else, but now the oven stays lit. Don't know why. Doesn't really make sense to me why it would go out in the first place unless there were air in the line. So it could be that somehow the leak that I had to let air in it flamed out or whatever. Still doesn't make a lot of sense because there's pressure in the line and it really shouldn't be letting air in because it's higher pressure than the outside. If any of you have had issues with your oven just spontaneously going out while baking something and you found a fix or have an idea, please comment below. I'd love to hear it. So while we're talking about propane, I want to give you guys a couple of tips that we've had scattered throughout videos. I also want to give you an update on our Blackstone propane mod. So let's start out first with a few tips. Number one is our gas stop. You may have noticed when I was replacing the thing out there, we have a little device between the tank and the connector. Things called a gas stop. Now you might think that a propane tank or a propane system I might have some kind of protective shutoff system and it doesn't. It does and it doesn't. There is a valve in there that will lock and it does not shut off your gas completely. I did a little test that I'll show you right now. I snipped off the end so that now I can test a leak by pinching the end here so it's shut and then releasing it, simulating a quick leak. So we're going to try it once without and then once with the gas stop in it. So let's connect it up here, shut off. You might be able to hear the um, OPD valve release when I connect this. Ah, there it goes. So basically what you're hearing there is that what little bit of pressure there was in the OPD valve being released. The EFV valve will kick in when I open this up. So let's do this. I'm going to clamp this off like that. I'm going to open up the propane. I can feel it pressurize this line here and I am going to release it. Now you hear the OPD valve or the EFV valve kick in, but you can maybe see in the sunlight there, a little bit of gas still getting out and you can hear it. I'm going to connect the gas stop. Super simple. Just goes right on in line with the hose. Same test, except now with the gas stop installed. And I'm going to release it. Done, completely cut off. No sound, nothing visible, nothing coming out of there. So you can see the gas doesn't stop when you have a hard rupture, if you have a line cut, if you have a tire blowout that ruptures a line, the gas stop will shut off your gas. So it's a really great safety feature. They do connect directly to your tank, so you need one for each tank. There is also a different version for the tanks that you'll find in a Class A RV where you don't have them removable. They're the big, bigger tanks that are installed and they're on their side. They're totally different, but there are gas stops for those as well. My next tip is around the regulators. The issue we had with ours is they were noisy, particularly when the propane pressure would get a little bit low and it was a little bit cold outside. Those things would hum and make buzzing noises. It would keep us up at night because the propane tanks are right below our bed. So I replaced both of those with really nice Excelsior regulators. That was a pretty simple process. So if you're having trouble with noise from your regulators, you may just need an upgrade. They're not difficult to do, but again, 
anytime you do something with your regulators, you want to time pressure drop test it. The next tip on propane is to do with reading the levels of propane that you have. Now there are a lot of ideas and things out there as far as how to know how much propane you have left in your tanks. Uh, you can get gauges that go on the output. The gas stop that I mentioned has a little gauge on it. That can be an indication of how much propane you have left. But to me, those things aren't really going to show you much because you've got pretty much the same pressure coming out of there until you start to get really low on propane. So I'm a bit dubious about how accurate those things are. We've been using the AP Products LPG propane sensors since day one, and they work great. It has Bluetooth capabilities, so you can either buy just the two sensors and put those on your tanks and use an app that they have on your phone, and you can read your tanks that way. You can also buy a kit that has two sensors and a remote monitor, where you can just go by and push the buttons every now and then and see what level your tanks are. And those are great because it's a mystery what's going on inside there. Another possibility is sometimes when you're running your propane, you can see a condensation line on there and that'll give you a really good indication of how high your propane is because at the bottom where the propane is, it'll be a little bit warmer than the top part where the gas is expanding. And you'll have a line there and you can kind of see where it is. But these AP product uh, LPG sensors work great. All you gotta do is replace the batteries like every six months and you're good to go. Our last tip is really an update to a tip. We did a video probably a couple of years ago now where we had a quick propane setup and we wanted to be able to connect our Blackstone easily to our propane system with minimal effort and be able to set up and use it. At the time, we had purchased you know, a Y connector and a regulator and a hose to connect to the Blackstone. And after a while, we noticed that the regulator that we had uh, just didn't work very well. It wasn't letting enough gas through to the Blackstone. That didn't work for a while, so I did a little research, went onto Amazon, and I found some replacement parts that are a little bit cheaper than the ones I actually originally got. And the regulator is adjustable. Now this, this is a game changer for cooking on your Blackstone or whatever gas appliance you have, and it's a little bit windy out. If you've ever tried to cook on a grill or a Blackstone with high wind, you'll know that the wind is just blowing the flame, the flame's not really releasing its heat. Um, it's just a real, real pain and it's almost impossible to cook in high wind or even medium wind. This variable regulator is really cool, but it's on you to regulate it and dial it in because you can put this thing in full on flamethrower mode where no wind is going to have any effect and it's just like, it's just blazing. So be careful when you use it. Don't go and leave it unmonitored, but it also gives you the ability to completely shut it off when you're done. So the way our setup is now, we have this a Y connector coming off of our gas stop. We have the tank, gas stop, and then a Y connector. Of course, one of those branches goes to our regular propane system, and the other one now goes to a line that has a quick disconnect on the end. And then I have a quick disconnect kit for the Blackstone, and it's super easy to set up. Eventually, at some point, I might take that quick disconnect connector and mount it to the frame somehow. Right now, it just kind of hangs down there. It doesn't really bother anything. And when we actually want to use the Blackstone for us, we have our Blackstone now on our slide tray. So we disconnect it after every use. But it's super simple. We slide our tray out, I connect the propane, and we're good to go. And I can adjust that flame as high or low as I want. Hope you enjoyed these tips. If you have any questions or comments, do comment down below. We do read all of them. Uh, we do answer most of them, particularly if it's a question. And please don't forget to subscribe, click the like button. We'll see you next time.